three, two, one. I forgot what I was supposed <laughs> to say. <laughs> what was what was I supposed to say? It was really good, Sue. So. I know. Whatever it was, was really good. You're never going to hear this information anyplace else. What's really going on at the state capitol? I'm the host of CCCR Education, and with me today is Sue Jeffers. Hello, Sue. How are you doing? Thrilled to be here with you again, Tim. We're going to get through this show, Sue. Yes, yes, we will. Okay, we kind of, the, la the last time we left the, the viewers, we were telling them, hey, you know, here's what's going on over at the Capitol, and now we want to be a little more specific. We want to tell you some more things that are happening over there, and let's just reiterate one more time. Mark Dayton wants to spend $37 billion. billion. Dollars. The House Republicans want to spend $34 Four billion, billion dollars, which is exactly coincidentally how much money we have, how, many, how much revenue we have we're coming in. We're expecting with the new forecast. Yes, that we're expecting, which actually I think as it goes along, we'll see a little more come in too. But the bottom line is it kicks the can down the road. And we have accounting shifts that we need to pay back. We have zero funding in the rainy day fund. Uh, We've Martin, stripped a bunch of a different accounting layers of government. There are reserve funds to pay the to balance the budget. So we have billions of dollars we need to fill in the blanks that, we right. have, that we're ignoring now. For, for when we really do have a, a, problem, a problem, you know, a, what, a, who knows, when something really bad happens. Um, and in the meantime, we have waste, we have fraud, we have abuse, we have duplicative programs, we have all kinds of issues that are not getting addressed over there. The thing that I want to touch on before we move into some of these uh, bills is Mark Dayton's plan to tax the rich. And I brought these numbers along because I think it's important for people to realize tax the rich doesn't work. And other states have found that out. In 2010, 2011, Oregon, to close its $3.8 billion deficit, they decided that they were going to raise their income tax to 11%. Hawaii and Oregon now have the two highest income tax rates in the United States, being 11%. Mark Dayton wants Minnesota's to be 11.95%. Um, so, I'm sorry, 10.95%, so just a half a percentage point under the two highest uh, in the nation. In the meantime, Oregon, who tried this last year, they tried the tax the rich approach. Last year, their tax rate brought in $180 million. This year, $130 million. Imagine that, a quarter of the rich tax filers have disappeared. And where would they go? And I would, and I could say that if I had Florida, that reason, right, Texas, I'm South gonna. Dakota. There's borders that we can cross into. Exactly. Right? And we will the go. The same thing happened in New York. The same thing happened in Maryland. The same thing happened in every place that tries to tax the rich. And and that the that really just bothers me so much because everybody wants more as long as someone else is paying for it. And that, that envy. Just and, another, yeah. and another thing that happens, too, is that down at the state capitol, everybody wants to cut government except th their program. Right. And you, you I'm willing to cut I'm, it all. I like I, what did I say last year running for office? I said it in 08. We should find out what the shortfall is. They cut everything across the board on state spending and be done with it. We could have been over and done with the budget within two weeks of the legislature starting. We could be working now on redefining government and shrinking it down to the constitutional limits right now. Instead, we're still bickering about what the budget even is, I let know. alone trying to pass a budget. I don't necessarily know that I would do across-the-board cuts because there are some areas. Take, for example, health and human services or education, which are such enormous pieces of the pie. Correct. And there is so much... Uh, duplicative programs well, agree, and, and abuse and I fraud agree. that I think they are just ripe for the picking. And Correct. I think we could cut their budgets 30%, 40%, and your average Minnesotan, you could cut it 50%, and your average Minnesotan wouldn't notice. Right, but those are two separate issues for Correct. me. One is balancing the budget and then focusing on what you just said. Mm -hmm. Right now, we haven't done either. No. So we're halfway through session. You know, we're really close to halfway through right. session, and neither one of those objectives have been accomplished. They work backwards. They, instead of saying, what are the priorities for the government in Minnesota to focus on, 
they look at us and they say, how much money can we spend? Correct. Now, I and, want to remind yeah. everybody real quick, I'm going to jump in here. Again, again, this is the priorities of Minnesota state government right here. It's the con it's called the Minnesota State Constitution. Again, look up Minnesota Constitution on the website, anywhere you'd like to look it up. Pops up, print it out, read it, teach your kids, teach your neighbors, and study the Constitution. The will of the people has already been determined, and we need legislators who understand that and are going to follow it. So, yes, we already have it, but nobody, a few people down at state capitol want to bother following the, following the rule of law. Not enough. Not, not enough. enough. Want not to enough. Follow it. And no. I, I, that just really bothers me. They've become part of the problem instead of part, part of the, of the solution. solution. And just the concept that they're trying to figure out how much money do we have to spend rather than what should we actually, actually be, be spending. Doing. Yeah, because you know what? I don't care what you say. I spend my money more efficiently and better and, and obviously to benefit my family, and I make those decisions better than any government bureaucrat ever would. Right. And it just irritates me when I when I find that I'm spending for the I'm spending my tax dollars for the National Trout Museum, or in St. Cloud for a civic center, or for a forty five thousand dollar author to come in to the give the kids in Stillwater a lecture on his book. That kind of stuff irritates me. I can take it one step further. It also irritates me that we continue to throw money into programs that don't work, whether they're workforce development programs, economic development programs. They have all these nice sounding names, but the bottom line is the people that we sent to St. Paul, they're not very good at venture capital. They're not very skilled at venture capitalism. And when they chose to invest our hard earned taxpayer money into something that that isn't going to work doesn't make money that couldn't work on the private market it does a disservice to all of us and a prime example of that would people are saying like what sue like what well like ethanol they thought ethanol was such a great thing the state of minnesota had to invest millions and millions of dollars into ethanol whether it's creation plants implementation mandating fuel levels, mandating greenhouse gas levels, everything, energy standards, any of that kind of stuff. All it did is drive up the cost of my energy costs, your energy costs, oh, yes. the, everyone's energy the costs, two, 30%. To the two thousand, I believe it's 2008 energy bill. Yeah. In July of last July, if you have people want to look at your, your gas bill, your electric bill, and your your garbage and water bill, it's it's uh, elevated, it's, it's uh, tiered. Yes. And based on your consumption, the more you consume, the higher the rates are charged. And I happen to call my local city, count city, and to find out where those dollars go. And they said, well, the garbage, the water bill, the state never really defined where the water, where this extra revenue goes. So the state puts the city puts this revenue in a general fund. So across the, across Minnesota, local units of government, county units of government, and other agencies and even in the private sector, get free money. And they have no real direction what to do with it, so they spend it on whatever they choose to. Like Minneapolis, and, didn't they buy $50,000 water fountains? Something like that, yes, yeah, something like Ten that. Ten of them? Ten of them, to, for a very good cause, art, the artwork, the arts, and whatever else they, they, they decide to do. So people got to understand there's a lot of layers of government. Our founding fathers set up the government with checks and balances and needed virtuous people of discipline and moral character to fill these positions so that we would follow the rule of law and not let government start straying off and trying to help the rabbits and the gerbils and the, you know, whoever else. And as time has gone on, government has expanded all these areas and we, the people, have stepped back and negated our responsibility and the kind of government continues to step in and fill that void. We need to start stepping forward and start taking responsibility for our own lives as our founding fathers gave us this liberty in this country and start telling government at all levels to step back and, and keep itself within the confines mm -hmm. of, of the Constitution. And I think people will remember from some of the shows that we did last year where we talked about they were spending money on indigenous earthworms. Right. And right. we yep. were, we're still doing stuff like that. Do you remember how last year we made fun of the $150,000 to teach Hmong women how to fish? Yes. And I offered to do it for a hundred grand. Said I'd yeah, teach I'd men and women. Yeah, I'll do it for fifty. I'll yeah. do it for fifty. Okay, well then, fine. I'll do it for forty-five. <laughs> but the the whole point being, you know, first of all, it's a fishing culture, so right. I, it's kind of crazy to begin with. But this year they're back, and they need two hundred grand to teach the Hmong women how to fish. And it and it, it never stops. It, it just, never stops. Once the foot's in the door, it just grows and it grows and it grows, and nobody pays. Few people pay. There are people who are paying We're attention. We're paying attention, They're, and that's and why people need, watch this show. We need show. the five million two hundred thousand Minnesotans to pay attention. Yes, 